A reading from 1 Corinthians 11. For I received from the Lord what I also handed unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance for me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I stand in an empty sanctuary in front of an empty plate and an empty cup. I wish by some means I could change that. I wish that I could fill the cup, break bread, and that we could share communion this evening. I wish we could do that tonight. I wish we could do that on, on Easter. But I can't. We can't. Because, you see, there's no substitute for you. I'm here alone. I'm not here with you. And it's not really that it has to be here, right? It's not that it has to be here. We can gather anywhere. It's not about the building. The building is an excellent tool for worship. But what is essential is the people gathered in the name of Jesus Christ for worship. We can have communion anywhere if we could be together safely. And we cannot. And I could try to rig something. I could put together video conferencing in Zoom, and I could uh, have people call in, and I could drop off uh, little bottles of grape juice, and I could try to pull something off. But no matter what I do, I cannot change the fact that we can't be in the same room. And it's just not the same. There is something essential about being able to hug somebody about being able to sit next to someone, about being able to shake hands, about being able to sing together, right? There are something about being in the same room that I just can't replicate. It, it just can't be replicated. Because you see, our bodies matter. Right? This is something we see in Jesus' life and ministry again and again and again. He shows us something that we have known all of our lives. Like, Jesus doesn't talk about just, I'd like to heal. He heals people's bodies. You were blind and now you can see. I fixed your body. Right? Jesus didn't just talk about the kingdom of God. He sat down and shared meals with people. Right? I'm not going to just talk about it. I'm going to eat with you. Right? Jesus didn't just talk about forgiveness. He forgave people as his body was pierced, paying a consequence for sin. He forgave us. He forgave the sins of our bodies so that we might walk through our days without bearing the weight of guilt as we follow after him. And so what we see again and again and again in the life of Jesus and in our own lives, that we are not sort of like... We're not detached from our bodies. It's not like there's Andy and Andy happens to inhabit this body. No, this is Andy. There is something essential, body and soul, connected together that makes up who I am and makes up who you are. And until we can be together in our bodies, we can't have communion. To put it as concisely as I can, there is no such thing as communion if you don't have commu community gathered. There is no communion without community. You have to have people gathered together in their bodies to share a meal. And it hurts that we can't do that. It truly does. This is the first time I will have ever been to a Monday Thursday moment in which we don't partake of communion. And that just hurts. But I will tell you that you are worth waiting for. This is worth waiting for. We will be gathered again. And when we do, it will be glorious. It will be done in the name of Jesus Christ. And it will be done when we are gathered together as a community. We will take communion again. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, this is a day that we usually gather together, and tonight we are not. It's going to happen tonight. It's going to happen again on Easter. It's going to happen multiple times in these coming weeks. 
as birthdays and graduations and family gatherings that we look towards so expectantly simply don't happen. And it hurts. It hurts to be separated. And so we pray that you remind us daily that inasmuch as we follow you, we never walk alone. That your spirit is with us. Combine that with a trust that you will continue to call us together and that we will once more be gathered to be your community, your church, gathered around your table for the feast you offer, communion. Not tonight, but it will happen. Amen. May the peace of Jesus Christ be with you this day and always. Amen.